Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today we are gonna be working on the first step toward building a vintage wardrobe, and that is starting with the correct underpinnings. My grandma used to always say, a good outfit starts with good undergarments, and so that's exactly what I'm going to do. At present, I don't really have a 1920s, 30s, 40s, 50s, uh, appropriate undergarment, right? I've got modern undergarments. And so my thought was, let's start with the base and work our way up. Unfortunately, in my stash, I did not have a pattern for any undergarments. However, there is a blogger, Mrs. Depew. She has a blog, a shop, and an Etsy shop, all of which I will link in the description down below. And she has a variety of draft at home patterns that were very popular during those time periods. She has a couple of different systems on her website. And one of them is the French system from that time period, which is what I've chosen to go with today. Today we're working on the 1940s corselet pattern. And this is the 1930s, 40s, 50s version of shapewear. <laughs> okay, there's no boning involved in it. It is entirely about the cut and the fit and using the correct materials to nip everything in nicely and make an outfit fit with a nice smooth overlay. Now, I have never utilized one of this type of draft at home patterns before. So while I do have some drafting experience, this is gonna be a new experience for me. So this I think will be kind of a really great pattern review, a learn it as we go and see if we can really make this draft at home pattern utilizing the French system work for us here. Now, if you buy any of these draft at home patterns from Mrs. Depew, you get an entire group of PDF patterns that you can download. The thing I like about this and why I chose a draft at home pattern, PDF pattern, as opposed to strictly a PDF pattern, is that I can trace out the pattern on my tracing paper, which is quite a bit thinner, versus a standard PDF pattern, I would have to print out all of those sheets on standard paper, play the jigsaw puzzle game of taping every single one of them together, and then cut them out. And while I think for certain things that could be fun, um, today I wasn't really sure that was the mood I was in. I'd rather really try this new system of trying to draft at home. I guess I shouldn't say it's a new system. These are original patterns from the period, so it's an old system and I wanna see if we can make it happen. So you'll get all of those PDF patterns if you order one. The first thing on top is you'll see the picture of the garment. And that's extraordinarily important in a draft at home pattern because you'll need this for reference when you're putting it together. A lot of the draft at home patterns from the period worked under the assumption you already had some sewing or drafting experience that it would have been passed down to you from your mother, your auntie, your grandmother, father, etc., and that you would have been able to put that knowledge to use. Now, even if you don't have this experience already at home and you want to try this, don't be afraid. Go for it. On Mrs. Depew's website, there are video links that can walk you through the steps of doing this. For the purpose of this video, I did not watch them because I wanna see if I can do it just with the instructions that are there and relying on the sewing knowledge that I already have to know if the knowledge I currently have would have been equivalent to the knowledge that they may have had in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. So that's what I'm going to do. I've kind of read through all of the pieces that she's given you. She leaves you a note. She gives you all of the instructables from the time period. You get this page here. This is actually the pattern we're using, and that's the whole thing. Guys, that's it. This is what we're gonna draft the pattern from, and we're gonna use this dot system to make it work. She's got translation from the French to English, because this is a reprint of a pattern from the French system from the period. The other thing you get are sheets and sheets and sheets of these fancy rulers. These are all in centimeters, and so you would take your own measurements, weigh where they tell you whether it's the bust, the waist, the hip, 
depending on the garment, they list that for you. And then you find your corresponding ruler. Now, 1930s, 1940s, 1950s, the rulers changed according to her website. And so for each pattern you purchase, you will need to make sure you have the correct ruler. She'll always send you the correct one. But if you're reutilizing a ruler from a previous pattern, just make sure it's the same year as the original pattern that you purchased. You tape these together and then you cut out the ruler size that you need. For me, for my measurements, this is my ruler. And then from there, we're gonna lay it down onto the piece of paper and we're just going to be following the lines, creating a dot pattern. I happen to have drafting rulers and so I am going to use them because I'm familiar with them. However, if you don't have drafting rulers at home, I don't think you need them. It's not something you would need to rush out and purchase. Instead, you can simply follow the dots and kind of make the lines as smooth as you can. So I've got the instructions here on my tablet. I have the printouts that I need and my special ruler. Now let's see if we can make this work. Today, I wanna to focus on creating a paper pattern, much like the pattern I've got here on my dress form. Only I'm gonna be making it with my tracing paper and see if we can't get this to work. From there, if we can, then hopefully next week we will be able to use these pattern pieces to make a beautiful period style undergarment. So let's get started, guys. Let's see if we can work our way through building a pattern at home with a draft at home system from 1940. All right, so this is really what we need in order to complete this pattern. Now the instructions show this pattern being drafted on a cloth board and if you have that at home if your sewing table is a, a cloth topped board you can just take a regular old pin stick it here with your ruler here and that's going to hold everything in place and allow you to pivot your ruler as you need i don't have that i have a wooden top table that is my preference and so i'm going to use one of these little bobbers that you use like for notebooks and so forth and I'm going to stick it through and that way I can continue to rotate the ruler properly while keeping it in place and that is really very important keeping everything secured together because if you draft this line and then you move your ruler and it comes away it's not exactly lined up perfectly um, you can see how it's not going to work your dots aren't going to inevitably line up so you really do want everything to remain very stable and stationary and secured in place. So that's what we're gonna start with. Making a little hole here. I've got my hole here. And now I'm gonna secure it to my tissue paper. And we're just gonna try to flatten that out as best we can. There we go. All right, let's hope my paper, my tracing paper is wide enough for my pieces here. All right, so all I have to do, or all I should need to do, is take this piece here and follow these lines. Now you can see these have numbers here, 23, 36, that sort of thing. And that is what we are going to be marking as we go. You'll notice the markings on the ruler, the specific ruler that you have based on your size here. So I'm going to come out to 36. One, two, three. I am guessing we're going to be going over it, over the, the number. So 36 will be my first dot here. And now I'm going to be moving. My next dot should be here at 23. Making sure I'm coming over the 23. Then 39.
Okay guys, I think that should be it. <laughs> These should be all of my dots, which right now look um, a little bit confusing, but that is why we're gonna correspond them and we're gonna leave our pattern right here on our tissue paper and we're gonna play this little game of connect the dots and see if we can't get ourselves in better order here. This is all of our pieces drawn out and I think they look pretty good. I think that might fit. Supposed to. This is a dot that I put in that for some reason doesn't quite line up with how the pattern looks here. And so I did go ahead and use the ruler to smooth it out and kind of bring it down. And I think that's more correct with the shape that we are seeing here. Honestly, here it even seems more dramatic because it certainly feels like it should fall below that line. Because this piece here is going to be this piece here. And so I feel like this piece is this section coming under here and I feel like it's gonna need a nice curve. I think we may go with this deeper curve here. So, so far, I think all of that was actually very simple. I think we're only missing one dot. It's the measurement for this dot right here. And I don't know if it's really missing or if I'm just not seeing it, which is possible. But now you can see we have this. This is pattern piece number one here. This is pattern piece number two. This is the bottom portion of the inside of the cup. Three. This is four. This is the top portion of the cup. And this is piece five. And this constructs the front of the corselet. We have not done the back pieces or the straps yet. And that's all that is on the second piece. So let's get that drafted out and see where we're at. All right, guys, here we are. We have the entire piece drafted and all of the individual pieces of the pattern cut out. Here's the wheel that we used with our dot pattern. And you can see all of the pieces match up. And I really actually think that they matched up and lined up pretty well. It looks like the picture. My next step will be to make a mock-up out of just some of my rummage fabrics before utilizing the uh, the performance wear fabric that I have just because I don't want to waste it and I know there may be some small things that I want to change. I'm a little concerned looking at the size of this that even though I did measure myself it might be just a little bit snug. Now I do know that that is part of this type of pattern. This is supposed to be a tight fitting garment. It is supposed to nip you in and make all of your clothes lay nicely. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes. I think 
I'm not going to be making the mock-up out of the stretching material, so we'll just kind of have to see how far off it seems, um, if it seems far off or if it seems like it might be just an inch or so. If it's only off by half an inch to an inch, I think that's purposeful because you're wanting all of these lines here where things are gonna be pulling in to be pulling the figure in. And in that case, it's okay in a performance wear fabric. If it's mm -hmm. more than an inch, then I think we might be in a little bit of trouble and I might need to adjust the pattern. Things that I'm already seeing that I like, I love the dramatic curve here at the waist to bring things in, but at a really nice flare at the hips and bottom area. And I think that's really important uh, for a figure like mine where I, I do have a significant hips and thigh area. Something else that I noticed they did with this pattern is this line right here. It drops down further here at the base of the hips to line up with this back rump portion. Um, and I think that's really smart because our hips flare out and so does our bottom. And if everything was cut at the same line, of course, everything is gonna pull up in the back and your little bottom is gonna be hanging out. Whereas this curve here is gonna help to kind of bring the hem line of this garment uh, close to the same all the way around. Now in the original image, it does show the back of it coming down a little bit further than the front, but I think what they're really trying to do is just show you that you're getting full coverage around the bottom area without having to have this, um, this front portion, this portion right here, too low on your thighs. So I'm very excited to try and do a quick mock-up with fabric and then see how we feel about the pattern and if any adjustment adjustments need to be made before I give this a go to see if I can make some proper 1940s undergarments. All right, I have finished tracing out my pattern from Mrs. Depew and made a quick mock-up with some old rummage fabric. Overall, I think it is definitely a workable pattern I definitely have room for improvement and I'm so glad that I made a mock-up. This section here that comes underneath in the pattern was such a hard seam to run because the seam comes here, there's a sharp corner and then it comes down into this point. And this line wasn't difficult, but this section under here was and I struggled very much trying to get it to lay flat and even and smooth. Getting the cups in place as well proved to be more of a challenge than I anticipated. And I was able to get them in properly on the side here. However, just making this turn here for some reason, it really got me and this front isn't laying smooth. I also felt like these points up here where the straps are supposed to connect were coming in very far, much further than I would have liked for me. Um, I think I would prefer the, the points to be here to come up over the shoulder on the outside. And at first I thought I may have drafted things incorrectly, but I looked back online, I found some actual corset patterns from the period in advertisements and so forth for ladies and some pictures of women of the time period. And that's actually quite correct to have them in quite that far. I am getting excited about actually making a proper corselet out of this particular pattern, but I know for certain that I will make some modifications to it before I do. Um, in many of the patterns in the advertisements, this is a solid line. There isn't this extra little wing here, and I think that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this pattern, bring it up an inch, and cut this section out so that this is basically just a diamond, and I think it will allow everything to fall more smoothly for the entire pattern. I also think I will slightly rotate the cups, gathering them to allow there to be more volume in the cup and move this back just a little bit to fit my body type a little bit better um, to create a nicer silhouette for myself so I don't end up with any um, side boob here, ladies. We all know what that's like. The other thing, this side panel that they have in the pattern is really nice. It gives you a little bit of extra room for your hips, but they put it in with like a triangle wedge also a son of a gun to get into place and I think I might just make this a straight cut. 
So there, and then finally the one thing with the pattern that I was worried about most, while the front portion of the pattern was large enough for me and my dress form, the back proved to be a little bit more snug. And so I'm gonna have to add a little bit here, probably two to three inches to the back of the pattern. Um, because while this is shapewear and the fabric will stretch, it's not gonna stretch quite that much. So I think this mock-up went really well. I think drawing out the pattern went really well. I think it actually did trace out properly according to what the pattern is supposed to be and what the original pattern was, but I do think I'll make a few modifications to make it work better for me. Thank you guys so much for joining me here on the channel today. If you liked this video and you would like to see what the final corset will look like, please hit that like and subscribe button down below and I look forward to seeing you guys next week.